Well, y'all, thank you for coming. Thank you for staying. Um, this was a quite an extraordinary event today. I know. I think I can speak for almost everybody here that everybody learned something today. And one thing that we learned is the great opportunity that's facing us now in South Carolina and the great assets we have to meet the challenges that will be, will be posed in the future, and they're beginning now. South Carolina's booming, and we have all the assets and all the people, especially the people, to make sure that we grow well in the right directions and doing the right things. And I have issued a executive order number 2023-18 today, it's effective now, that reflects the considerations that were raised during this meeting we had today. And essentially, this is to prepare us for the future for energy. Because we know we're booming, we're growing, we're one of the fastest growing states in the country. People from all over the country are coming here. Our businesses, our small and large businesses here are, are growing. New ones are popping up all over the place. And we also have companies and investors from around the world and around the country that are coming as well, and they want to hire our people. So we're very proud of that and thankful for it, and we know that there are three major pillars to our success, and they're all intertwined as much as roots on a, on a tree, and that is our economic growth, our educational excellence, and our environmental and protection of our environmental and cultural heritage. And without all of them growing and prospering and strengthening at the same time, we cannot move forward. So today we were speaking primarily about energy. When we had our electric vehicle summit, we realized more fully than before, a lot of us, that this success is directly dependent on a reliable, safe, steady source of good, clean energy. And that was what we were talking about today. So I'm, I'm explaining to you now this executive order it is actually, you will remember, Accelerate SC, when we were responding to the pandemic, we had everybody involved from every sector, from academics to agriculture to the, the nuclear industry to all the technologies to educational establishment and teachers and farmers and professors and every kind of business in between. And we ended up charting a very careful and highly successful plan of how to make it through the pandemic. And we learned there vividly how important it is and how effective it is to do that. So that's what we did today. And so this executive order today essentially copies what we did with the electric vehicle summit where we created a task force consisting of the Department of Transportation, Department of Commerce, Office of Regulatory Staff, and maybe a few others to be a one-stop shop for electrical vehicle expansion. Well, this all this does the, the same thing, and it, it creates such a group that will be located in the, or, or organized by the Department of Commerce called Power SC. Now, the actual name is a little bit longer than that. Let's see, it is the to authorize the Department of Commerce to convene and to coordinate the activities of the Power SC Energy Resources and Economic Development Interagency Working Group. So we're gonna call it Power SC. And it also refers to our power plan, it, in, in, which is already required by law, and it requires reports, and it refers to all of the government agencies involved, and those are these, the Office of Regulatory Staff, the Environmental Affairs Administration, or the Department of Health and Environmental Control, or its successor, because you understand we 
doing work on, on that now. Division of Land, Water, and Conservation, South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, or its successor. South Carolina Department of Transportation, South Carolina Department of Employment and Workforce, South Carolina Office of Resilience, South Carolina Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation, and the Office of the Governor. <clears throat> and as, as you noticed, everyone, just about everyone who spoke today referred to how we in the various agencies and offices and businesses and industry uh, across the state have learned the success of communicating, collaborating, and cooperating. And that's precisely what this document does. It requires it. We, are, we already have laws that require various parts of this, but now we're putting it all together again, and I know we're going to have great success. So I want to thank you for coming, and now we'll answer your questions. No questions. There you go. Nuclear and ga natural gas, uh, well, all of the above has been stated uh, several times. We are in all of the above. Uh, we have, we're about 54 or 56%, something like that. Our power is, is nuclear now. Uh, there's a lot of interest, of course, in solar. There's some interest in, in wind. There's a lot of interest in, in gas. And the big question is, when do we need, we want to travel towards clean energy. But the question is, how do we get there, and how do we get there without slowing down? So it's a delicate balance, and we're going to have to have a lot of collaborating, communicating, and cooperating in order to, to chart that properly. That was when the, that was not an accident. That was when the, not an incident, yeah. Well, that, that's, uh, that was unfortunate. I wish we had those reactors being built now. Uh, the Southern Company uh, went ahead with theirs. Uh, they just are uh, building the Vogel plant, I think two, two new new reactors just across the river. And of course, that power will be available to us as it is uh, everywhere else in the country that goes on the, the grid and the various rules and regulations about that. But, um, South Carolina is one of the first states to embrace nuclear power, and nuclear power is clean. And Congressman Duncan, I, I think, has effectively convinced the, the federal authorities that it is, it is clean power and should be included uh, in that. So our people are comfortable with it. I, I think our people are, are comfortable with all of those that I mentioned. It's just a question of what is the availability of which kind, how can uh, how, how do we be sure that we have plenty as we move towards what is the the move towards clean energy? How will this help public good and public health? Well, if if we have power that is steady and reliable, then it means the lights won't go off. Uh, people in hospitals will have, although they have redundancy and have their own generators, and be able to stay on. Uh, we cannot move uh, forward without without electric power. We can't. We got to have air. We have to have water, and we have to have electric power. Yes. That that would be uh, be wonderful. Of course, you remember the nuclear navy. I think it was Admiral Rickover. They, I think that submarine is still floating around out there and hadn't come up for air yet. Uh, it has a small module of uh, nuclear reactor on it. But that's, uh, that's the future that I don't believe someone else might know behind me. The, the, uh, they have, have been, I think they've developed in some other countries. There may be a few that are uh, in action now. But that's a part of the future as well because they're a lot smaller. They can be put, they're a lot less expensive, and they can be placed out in, in places and set up a lot quicker than these big nuclear plants. That's right. Well, Merle, uh, Speaker Merle Smith w was talking about that. He was talking about uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I, I think. And it was recognized by the panelists that, that we, we're not at our uh, full capacity yet, but we're getting pretty close. 
and that was an indication of that. And that, that what that means is that we must have our power, we must be diversified, and we need to be sure that we have reliable power. When the sun goes out, uh, so do the solar panels. If the wind quits blowing, then they quit producing. Now, nuclear goes night and day, but it takes a long time to, to build them, unless they're the small nuclear reactors, and they're very expensive. I think the Vogel plant uh, probably has maybe tripled or quadrupled in the, the price that it was um, you know, estimated to, to be. But we have to have this power, because remember, if we don't, then uh, there are uh, forces uh, around the world uh, that, uh, that uh, may attempt to interrupt our power sources. And we talked earlier about the, back in the 73 and 74, from October 73 to March of 74, when President Nixon took us off the gold standard and also uh, sent military aid to Israel, which was in a fight with Egypt and Syria, I think, that we had the embargo where the price of oil went for th from $3 a barrel to 12. I don't know what they are now, but that's a four times increase. And you couldn't get gas, and this economy stopped. And it was quite something. And uh, they had a conference in Washington and were able to get back on track. But that was a frightening experience. And we don't want to, we want to be energy independent in this country, and we have a role to play in South Carolina. And one of the reasons is, is because we are not scared of nuclear power. And that is a, that is a solid producer, night or day, warm or cold, doesn't make any difference. But we need to be diversified. We want to, don't have just a one-legged stool. We want to be able to use everything. That was mentioned, too, it, by uh, uh, several of the, the panelists, that because we able to seem to be able to do things so much quicker and so much better than a lot of other states, that uh, by taking the lead in, in this way, we may ha have a, a good example, be a good example, a short path forward for some of the other states. And, of course, we're going to be watching them like hawks, too, to see whatever good ideas they've had and whatever bad ones they had that didn't work, we're going to try to avoid those. I'll let Santee Cup, I, I think we're trying to get all the power we can. If Santee Cup would like to say something about that. So, come on up, brother. First of all, um, it, it would have been incredibly challenging to get um, natural gas up to um, Winya. Right. And so we're not building a smaller plant. Um, one of the options that we have is to build in Hampton. We're also, and we talked about this a lot today, we are in conjunction with Dominion. We're actually building a bigger plant. Um, and we're planning on doing that, or at least we're planning on it right now, um, in, at Kennedy's. Um, and we have the option of potentially building a, no a second plant in Hamden. So I think at the end of the day, we're actually, we actually think we've got better locations closer to existing pipelines that make it much more likely that we will, uh, we will get, bring these plants to uh, fruition. I guess he answered that one, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go anywhere, it might be some more. <laughs> Okay, y'all, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you.